everybody. How are you? How are you? Welcome, welcome to a special episode of Live with Miss B. That's right, a special episode. I know you're not used to seeing me this time of day, but you just never know when I'm going to show up. Uh, thank you for joining me. And of, as always, there may be some technical difficulties. It looks like I'm frozen, but prayer for the message will still go forth. If this is your first time joining me, I am Miss B, positively Miss B, Bonita Claiborne, coming to you with interviews and I even do events. I'm on the Flow Network, where we can be seen on uh, Amazon TV, Apple TV, and other platforms. Right now, you're probably seeing me on my personal Facebook pages. I have a special guest. All my guests are special. You know that. All of my guests are special. But this person um, I recently met, and we connected, and I believe that she has something that I would like to share with all of you. Uh, Father, in the name of your sure Jesus Christ, that I serve. I thank you for this opportunity for this global ministry. I pray that you continue to cover us and that everything we do and say be acceptable in your sight, but the messages be received in the manner that is meant. Continue to bless the Flow Network and all of those co concerned with the podcast broadcast. And I ask you to continue to thank. Uh, I want to continue to thank you for my daughter, Jamise Bianca as she continue along her healing journey. In the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, I believe it is so. Yes, this is a special time for me. I have, um, I do a show every Sunday at 1 p.m. And um, usually on Sunday evenings, I'm chilling. But this time I decided to come live. I have, um, I attended a event in Petersburg uh, trying to encourage business interest. And while I was there, I met uh, Tamara and we communicated. And I believe her message is timely. Um, we have a lot going on in the economy. We have a lot going on everywhere, but also she's a woman of faith. So I would like to introduce you to my guest, Tamara Taylor. Hi, Hi how, how are you? Are you? I am blessed to see you, pretty lady. I am blessed, blessed to be here. Thank you for having, for having me. me. Not a problem. As I was telling my viewers, I usually don't do anything on a Sunday evening, but I made a special exception just for you. Uh, I told them that we, how we met um, and why I decided to do this special show. But before we move forward, um, I mentioned that you're a woman of faith, and that was one of the things that we really connected on. Yeah. Um, yes. In your own way, introduce yourself to your audience. Yes, yes. Well, I'm Tamara Taylor, I'm the principal broker, principal broker owner of the of community, community real estate. estate. I also, I also contact the Indian Kingdom relationship. I'm the Kingdom of the and then I'm and then also the co-host of the new perspective show, show on the visionary and host, host and the Harper, and the other co-host was with Ms. Bridget So we'll so be we'll coming, be coming back soon because we'll be talking with various entrepreneurs and changing the perspective of those of our audience. You know what? Okay, I'm gonna leave that alone. <laughs> she did very well. And so um, as we move forward into the interview, there, there are two things I wanna cover, how faith impacts you as a real estate agent, yes. and then how real estate is impacting the economy. You know, everything is a minister to me. Would you say um, being a broker, real estate agent, being in this type of, of work is a ministry? I don't do it. Um, and it's and also it's for me as a leader because, because I do I have clients that work on the community real estate group. And, and so it, it allows me the opportunity to share, share what I have experienced in God because I've been in this industry for a little over 18 years. years. So it's allowed me to share my journey, my passion, and my pitfalls because a lot of people need to talk about the pitfalls that we experience. Absolutely, absolutely. When you um, began your real estate career, would you say you had to step out on faith? Because a lot of people are like, oh my goodness, I got to worry about commission in order to survive. How did faith play a part? Oh in my goodness, goodness. it was definitely, definitely faith. faith. Um, uh, I can I be can very, very transparent, transparent and honest. honest. My family was totally against it. I come from a line of realtors. So my aunt, 
was a realtor, still is a realtor. She's actually one of my associate workers with my company. Um, so she uh, was there for my parents. They, they experienced, experienced because my father was also an agent. agent. And I'm and sorry, sorry for the, I don't know why the volume or if you can hear me back. So I apologize. I apologize that. Do you have two devices on? I do I not. Do not. Okay, so, well, the, we're just going to keep it moving. Um, so your, family, um, your family is involved in real estate. And they were like, girl, yes. what are you so They were like, like no. Uh, uh, they, they saw, saw the pitfalls, the times, the times where, where real, real estate, estate had kind of drawn, drawn, drawn up. up. It, was it was difficult and challenging. So they were like, no. Like, um, and it was kind of, you know, you need to have five times of your income. You need to have a savings. You need to do this. And my son was small at the time. And I said, you know what? I'm going to give him my all and try it. If it doesn't work, then I'll just find another job. But at that point, I stepped out by faith. Um, my best friend, who was my loan officer at the time, she brought me into the business and we were ready to rock and roll. But it was truly by faith that I had to take that leap, even when everybody else said, no, 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 this isn't the time. You have a small child. How dare you quit your job and do something that's so unpredictable on a full time basis? Well, um, my dogs are barking in the background, so we both got issues. But that being said, you know, um, when people say step out on faith, especially when it comes to um, working on commission, um, before we move forward, what would, how would you encourage someone who's thinking about being a real estate or think about leaving? What I would say is, first and foremost, you have to pray about it and see God, because everything is about timing and your season. So you have to listen to the voice of God and what his instructions are for you. If it is for you to come into this industry, then there is a people that God will have you to serve. And you have to walk in obedience of that. And you have to, um, I remember one of the old pastors used to say, when you're scared and fearful, you bring it with you. So even in your fearful place, even when you're unsure, you have to know that God will not put you in a situation that he will fail because he can't. God does not fail. So you you have to listen to the instruction and follow it. It's one thing to hear it, but it's another thing to implement because we have to be impactful and for what God is calling for us to do. Those that are thinking about leaving the industry, why? What is it? Is it your time is up? Is your season up? What's going on that's causing you to feel like you're second guessing your career decision? And is God pulling you into something else because of your time is being spent pulling into a different direction, or maybe God is pulling you into leadership, getting your broker's license and pushing you into another direction beyond just being a sales agent. Because, because sometimes, sometimes we get comfortable, we get comfortable at just at one just level, level and not, and not seeing, seeing what God, God is taking us into, into a different, different place. place. I also want to interject, a lot of people are unemployed. And if you go yes, into yes. something for the wrong reason, then that could be an indicator why you're unhappy. A lot of people are like, I need a job. I need to do something. Let me go. And then they realize, oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I don't like dealing with people. I don't want to go out in all kinds of weather. And who are they to be telling me what I need to do? I'm sick of these meetings. And, you know, so um, as far as you saying seeking um, godly wisdom in, in everything, but especially uh, this type of career, mm -hmm. um, Again, being that you're seasoned as well as um, family members involved in it, if you would at this time, um, give a word of encouragement to people to go into it for the right reasons, because chasing after money is not necessarily, especially in the beginning, any type of sales is, is, is rocky. That is, that very, is very rocky. rocky. Any type, Any type of, type of skill skill is rocky. rocky. But what, but what I, would I would say to a bunch of people is that you have to be passionate and listen to your heart. You can't come into it because a lot of people see the glitz and the glamour of the money. Oh, when we sell a house, we get 3% commission. Uh, we get all of this money. And that's that's one part of it. That's one piece of it. But who are you serving? Is your heart to serve the people? Because if you're just after the money, you will never be fulfilled because you're going to come into a career. And when the, when the hard times come, you won't know how to sustain. When things get challenging, you're going to be ready to pull out because your heart isn't in it. 
So you have to be encouraged to know that I'm here to serve people because when you come into real estate, it's not about yourself. It's about who you are helping, whether you're helping a client purchase a home. This is one of the biggest decisions that they will ever make. So they don't want to feel like they're being pressured. They don't want to feel like they're being pumped and primed and sold a dream. They want to know that they have somebody that's going to have their back. That's going to be honest. That's going to tell them the truth and walk them through the entire process step by step by step, because this is something that's emotional for them. Most people when they're buying a house, it's an emotional attachment. Same thing when they're selling a house. For those that may be downsizing, kids have gone off to college, it's emotional for them. So you have to be able to minister to them, to talk them through the process. And so if your heart is not there and it's all about the dollars, you won't be successful. So in order to come in, you have to make sure that you are not just in the right mindset, the right headspace, but your heart is aligned, that you know you are selfless. It is not about you in this business, but it's about those that you are call to and those that you will impact while in this industry. I love that response. And have you found yourself in a situation where you really felt that they were not making the best decision? And how did you handle it, if so? Uh, um, was it a client or another agent? agent? Client. We'll get into the agent. Yes. 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 And, and I've, I've had to have those hard conversations because I am held accountable for everything, for everything that, that I do. do. So if so a client is moving into something, something and I know it's not the best because Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit is, 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 is um, pulling up my heartstrings, heart and I need to I have a conversation. conversation. At the end of the day, it's up to them to make their decision. But I'm going to have have those those hard conversations when it's a property property, and they they fell in love with it and the home home inspection just came out horrible and and they still want this property. property. And we need to really talk talk about how much you're going to be putting into it. Is this going to be best suited? Remember what your goals are when we first sat down and talked. You wanted something that was moving, ready. Now, not saying everything is going to be perfect, but you have to kind of remind them and touch them through it because they will get so excited about what they see and the glitz and glamour. But again, but there's only so moving parts to it. To it. And so and you so want to have those hard, honest conversations and bring your clients back. back. Because, because sometimes, sometimes they'll jump, jump off the ledge. Things, things can be simple, could be the other way around. Two, two things going on with the property, property and they're ready to just cancel, cancel the contract. contract. And it could be small things. So you have to be able to have that wisdom and that soft voice and how to speak to them in a way that is not condescending, that they understand and we're bringing back to what your goals are. And what is the resolution of the solution for the issue? Because that's what it all goes down to. Whatever it is, what is the solution? And that's my job, is to help them come up with that solution. Um, as a faith-based broker, yes. Do, yes. do you find yourself praying um, before you make these contracts and these contacts and how has prayer helped you through all this? Prayer has helped me get contracts for the closing tape. There have been contracts that I know it is nothing but the grace of God that has gotten approved. They have found favor. I've had people tell me I was going to go up on this particular property, but it just was something about it. And it was my client and it was prayer. And, and I, 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 even, even when I'm writing a contract, contract, I pray about, about it, it to make, to make sure, sure that we're putting it the best, best offer. offer. Now, not and every offer is going to get accepted, but, but I want to make sure that I'm here in spirit, spirit and not tampering when I'm and sitting, sitting there and writing an offer for that client. client. So, so prayer is a huge part. Even when I'm with my clients, we're praying for the property. I could be silently praying and listening to what you're talking about because I want to see what's going on and hear what their reactions are. And I'm looking to see their body language and it's like it and it's like it and it don't. don't because one, one thing i always tell them is do not settle, not settle. don't just settle, settle because if you settle, settle for something you will not be happy absolutely absolutely i'm going to take a little short break and when we come back we will continue um and we're going to talk about your experience as a broker and dealing with other realtors okay okay
This is my daily medical journal you can find on Amazon. Inside you can track your blood pressure. You can uh, also track your vitamins and supplements. And there's a calendar to know when to take your medicine and if you have any doctor's appointments. Also, there are blank pages for any notes you need to take. Hey, everybody. I'm back. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're just joining, absolutely, uh, for the first time, thank you. This is Ms. B. I am doing a special interview uh, with Tamara Taylor. We're talking about real estate and faith. What you just saw was a short clip of my daughter. That's right, Jamise Bianca. She wrote a book. Uh, she's a stage four cancer survivor. And you can find her book on Amazon. She was inspired to write that book based on all the experiences we had with doctor's appointments and medications and questions. So uh, you can find that on Amazon. Again, that's my daughter, Jamise Bianca. You can find her on all social media under Jamise Bianca or Jamise Wilson. Thank you so much for your support. All right, I'm going to bring the guest back. Thank you so much. Um, we were talking about how faith and prayer uh, was an integral part of what you do professionally. You are a broker, which means that you're not just working alongside a real estate agent. You actually, uh, they're under your licensure. Tell me a little bit about how your faith is helping you to deal with um, those type of personalities. It's called cultivating leadership because, because again, it's, it's, it's self -select. Self -select. I have, I have to, make to make sure that, that I'm accountable, accountable to each, each one, one of my agents. agents. What, are what are they, they needing from me? What, what do, do they, they need to show that they, they are successful? So, so I, I do group meetings, meetings, I do one-on-ones. One -on -one. We sit we down and we really talk so I can assess. What, what is it that they mean? mean? And then I take, I take that, that prayer. prayer. So, so I can, I can ask, ask God, God okay, what, what is it that I need to do? How is it that I can make this happen so I can give the best of me to them? So I give them the good, the bad, and the ugly so they will understand and know all, all of, these of these different, different sides, sides of this business, of this business because, because it's beyond just showing the property. It's beyond just listing, listing a house. house. You're, You're talking, talking to people that, that are in different stages. Some, some, some of them may be going through a foreclosure or trying to prevent a foreclosure. Some, 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 some of them could have had health issues. Some of them were relocating and they're they 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 nervous. Some of them could have lost a spouse. And now they're having to move because they can't take care of their financial responsibility. So they're different dynamics. So I want them to know no, no. I want to talk, talk to, to people. people. Um, um, not, not just looking at them as a client, client. but I but always say people, people, my clients are like family. family. I build that that, that, that that relationship. relationship. People they work with people they trust, they trust and they, they like. like. And, and so, so when so you're, you're talking, talking to people, people they, know they know if you're just in fluff, if you're able to really relate to them, help them and see them through their journey. So that is what my job as a broker is to provide them with the tools necessary to make sure they're successful. And that goes beyond the office because I want them to be successful in everything. And I pray for my agents who doesn't just stop with clients. I'm glad you brought that up. We're going to segue into... Uh, your affiliation with some other uh, businesswomen, entrepreneurs, and you all have um, a ministry together. Tell us a little bit about that. So, so, so new the new show, show. So, 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 can what you can do, you do or what is needed so that so you can bridge the gap and, and have a healthy relationship and co-working space, space and kind of bring it all together, together. So, so we have, have different, different topics that we talk about, about whether it be relationships, um, those, those that have, have experienced uh, sexual, sexual assault, assault because, because those, those things affect your confidence, confidence and affect you even as a businesswoman, business um, um, how you kind of go through different situations and overcome them. So we talk about those things as a collective. Um, we have about five or six minutes and there are some things that I know you would 
want to share concerning mm -hmm. events coming up. Take a few minutes and just talk about the bullet points that you want to make sure people understand. I think you got some grant information, a lot of stuff you want to say. Okay, well, go ahead and take this time to do Thank it. you. I have, I a, have great a great class, class that'll be coming up on Saturday, Saturday, Saturday March 4th. It is, is going to be at the community office. office. We, are we are located, located at 203 Twin Ridge Road, Ridge Road, Ridge Road, Ridge Road, Ridge Road on the South Side. Side. Okay, okay. This, this is going to be a great one. We're going to talk about all the different grants. Why grants are Useful, because right now there are a lot of people that are, that are nervous, nervous and stressed out. They feel like they can't qualify because of the rates. And we always, we always say, say you date the rate, marry the house. house. But you still have people that are nervous that I want to walk them through what, what opportunities are available for you to be able to get grant funds and the different resources that are available. So if you would like to attend, please register by calling 804. 501-5999, or you can email us at info at crgmetrics.com. That is one of the biggest events that we have coming up, and then we're putting together a calendar to add some additional events. As well, if you're interested, you can become a real estate agent. We have classes coming up in March, so you can definitely reach out. The same, same avenues, avenues by calling or emailing us, and we collect you know when the next class will be starting in What are some of the things that you feel should be a red flag when it comes to choosing a real estate agent? One that, One is, that is pushing or rushing you to make a decision. decision. We, we want, want to be, be um, somewhat aggressive, so we want to help them to make, make their, their decisions, decisions, those that are in the space, but, but, but I don't want to force them where they're uncomfortable. You want to work with someone and let you say you may need some time to think about it, I respect that decision because I want to make sure that I'm the right person for them and vice versa. Because, because I want to make sure, sure they're going to listen as I'm training, training and talking and walking walk them through this process. process. So it, so has, it has, has to be a two-way two street. street. Because again, I'm a believer of who God has for you. It's specifically for you. And, and I'm, I'm not, not going to rush, rush anybody, anybody, make them feel like they got to make a decision right now, especially when I'm discerning their own children. Because if you push them, it's going to put them in a bad state. You want to make sure that they're ready and listening. And even if they're not ready, I'm always, always following, following up. up. Hey, hey, what questions, questions can I ask? ask? Sending out you know, information so they'll they know that they're when that time, time comes and they're ready, ready, then I know I that if I am the one that they, they choose, choose, they'll be reaching out to me. me. Because at their point, she's ready to be available, available for them. them. So we encourage them to take time to really see if it's a good fit between yes. them and the agent. Yes. So, yes. Um, Give them a few pointers on what they should be getting together if they're thinking about buying a home. If you're thinking, if you're thinking about, about buying a home, home you want to know what you're looking for. for. You want to find, find out your, your, whoever you work, work with, with, who they who use they as, use a, as lender. a lender. You can, you can reach, reach out and ask questions. You know, you, know, you, you want, want to have you write down what your are concerns. What are what the different rates? How will the rates affect you? Does that make a big difference for you right now? Because, because I can honestly say, say our rental, rental expenses are increased. Increase. Well, well, a lot of times, lot of times you're you're rent, rent, you can get rent, you can get, get you a nice house, house and get, get some, some of those tax benefits, and you have something that you own. But you also have to shift from a renter to a homeowner mindset. With the renter, you have the capabilities to call me, make me to be able to certain things fixed. And when you're a homeowner, you're speaking on a different mindset because now you have to have a home warranty put in place for money that is um, that um, you that can just get to some, some of those repairs. Those are some of the things that we kind of talk about, about so people will know because a lot of people just don't know what is available um, to them to help them 
ease into this home ownership. So you want to have your questions written down. So when you're talking to realtors, interview them. You can interview more than one person. You don't have to just decide, hey, I got this person's card and this is who I want to work with. You want to make sure that they've been in the business. And even if they haven't been in the business for a long time, do they have the tools and resources to help you that's specific to your situation and to your circumstance. And that's going to help you achieve the ultimate goal of home ownership. And if you cannot qualify, what tools and resources do they have available that can help you work on your credit, help you with your savings? Do they know about these different grant programs so that you will have those things in place and have a realistic time frame and a goal set of, OK, three to six months. If I do this, 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 I'll be able to qualify. And I'll work with my realtor and my loan officer to help me be accountable mm -hmm. because I'm ready to go ahead and get to this end goal. And these are the things that I need to put in place. So you want to have people that's going to help push you when you're ready. That's going to help hold you accountable and stay on target and on track and know the latest trends. So they're helping you and not being a hindrance to you to make sure that you're getting through to the end goal. Well, the end goal for us is almost here. So before we leave, there's a lot of chit chat. Some people say it's a seller's market. Some people say it's a buyer's market. Mm -hmm. What is it? Right, right now, now, I would, I would say, say it's a buyer's market. market. Um, um, homes are increasing. The, the property value is definitely increasing. And you have buyer homes still on the, on the fence. fence. But what? this is this the time is where, where I'm starting to see where some um, sellers are paying some closing costs. You know, you know um, there are different programs where you can buy down, down the rate, rate, rate to make it a little more affordable for you. I still, I still have clients that are looking at new construction. Um, and they're um, offering they different incentives, incentives as well. well. So, so should we think of what we're looking for? So this is a great, great time um, to still be able to purchase and buy. Just getting over that fear. Well, all right, then we're not going to talk about fear, false evidence that appears real. That's right. Right. <laughs> so we have about three minutes left. If you would just give them your contact information again and also um, a word of encouragement for them to really consider coming to their class. All right. All right. Just, just, just to contact me. You can contact me. Our office is at 203 Our office number is 804 And our email address is info at And you can follow up on social media at for anybody that has considered buying a home, I'm not sure if they can qualify, come out. You would be surprised. I have some statistics that I'll be going on on credit that is needed to come up with programs. And there's a lot of money that is available that I want people to be able to take advantage of. So they're not trusting them like they got to keep up their form of pay, or I don't have anything to say There are some things that you would just miss one person saying. And we're going to talk about that. How you can afford to move forward and not wait and be a homeowner in 2023 before the summer hit. So this, so this is the time. time. Do not do procrastinate. I encourage you. You'll be blessed. You're going to have white white doors. It's going to be a fun time for you to come out and learn the information that will empower you to move forward. Well, all right, everybody. There you have it. Thank you so much for joining me tomorrow. I call it tomorrow. What's your proper name? Tamara or Tamara? Tamara. Tamara, you know, I, I miss B. I'm going to mess it up. <laughs> it's so funny because I get Tamara, 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 I get it all. I respond. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. This is Miss B with a special episode of Live with Miss B. As with um, 
her uh, real estate agent. You can find me on all social media under Positively Miss B. Please join me every Sunday at 1 p.m. East Coast time right here on all of my social media and the Flow Network with Brunch with Miss B, where we talk about issues of men in honor of Chris Allen. We interview only men and we talk about subjects that they don't really talk about, but that's again another subject. All right, everybody, you have a blessed week. We love you and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you thank for you having me. You. You're welcome. Thank you.